Welcome to Sportswoman. A groundbreaking rule change in one of sailing's biggest races will come into effect next year to boost the number of women taking part. The Volvo Ocean race teams will be incentivised to have mixed teams or face reduced crew numbers. Today we ask if this will help or hinder the gender balance in the sport. And to guide us through the changes and debate the impact they will have, we are joined by two of the country's most successful female sailors. Dee Kafari and Tracy Edwards are here. Also on the programme, we're on the road with England's cricketers to learn their tour secrets. It's a bit of an unwritten rule that you do not change seats. So the moment you step off the airport, you choose your seat, and for the entire tour, that is your seat. We've got lots of live netball on Sky Sports for you this week. Details are on the way. And as the FA plans to double participation in women's football over the next four years, we want to hear from you. If you are playing football for the first time this half term, get in touch with us on social media. But first, organisers of the Volvo Ocean Race have made the groundbreaking decision to change the rules for next year's race to force more women into competing crews. Skippers who have more women in their crews will be allowed a greater number of team members. If teams opt to be male only, they will be allowed only seven crew members, one less than in 2014. That limit increases to eight or nine for teams taking seven men and up to two women. Crews which have an even mix will be allowed 10 crew members, five men and five women. And all female teams can race with 11 sailors. The Volvo Ocean Race is for the best sailors in the world, period, regardless of gender. And I think uh, we're in a position now where we can actually see the females coming back into the crews because they're rated professionals. We're not doing this as a race to tick boxes or to align ourselves with something in particular, or get a headline. You know, we, we're doing it for, for building the future of the sport. You know, the biggest, one of the biggest problems we had when we put Team SCA together was there was no females out there with experience to choose from. It was very limited. Uh, so now there's, you know, there's already that base of 14 women out there that, that were exposed to the race, plus all the others that we trained up. That, that have been, you know, have been a part of this race and they could form the basis of the next generation, which is this race. And if we can multiply that by another 40 in this race, then we're, and people are, you know, they've given, been given the opportunity to become good enough to race around the world. Well, the race celebrated its 43-year anniversary last month. During that time, more than 100 women have competed since 1973. That's compared to more than 2,000 men. Well, I'm pleased to say that two of those female sailors join us now, Dee Kafari and Tracy Edwards. Thank you for coming on the programme today. Now, we're also asking you at home what you think about this rule change on Twitter. Head to Sportswoman Sky to have your say in our poll. So, Tracy, first of all to you. Um, some people hearing about these, this rule change could argue that it's unfair, forcing the hand of the teams. Can you explain why it's happening and how it's come about? I think uh, it's happening because uh, although we have uh, women have been heading towards this point for a very long time, uh, first all female crew 30 years ago, yeah. um, various all female crews, you know, sort of over the years, all the things that Dee has done uh, in various racing, lots of women have done. We're still not seeing mixed teams. Uh, you know, we're seeing whole events where it is just men only. And we're one of the few sports where we can all, you know, sort of compete together. Um, I don't think it's forcing men to take women. I think it's opening up the opportunity of allowing them to see that there's 50% more of the population that they can choose from with some extremely talented sailors out there. So do neither of you think then that if women are good enough that they would naturally get into the teams? You'd think so, but uh, it's really hard. The guys naturally will sail with their friends, who they trust, who they've sailed with before, who they know to be physically strong. And quite a lot of the sailors have never sailed in a mixed environment before, so it's the unknown to them. So rather than put a hard and fast rule, which could be a bit contrived and we'd feel a little uncomfortable about just ticking a box to meet a rule, it's a very clever um, change, this edition of the race, that Volvo Ocean Race have done because it opens up the opportunity to incentivise you to have a mixed crew. So now it's advantageous to have those extra pairs of hands and make them work for you. And I think it's a positive move 
that's going to encourage and I think once that becomes the norm then it will be accepted. A few years back they introduced an under 30 rule that people were very reluctant and pushed back against and now we've got amazing young sailors coming through the sport and going on to bigger and better things instead of the same old salty old sea dogs going around the world. <laughs> so I think it's another rule that's going to take a little bit of time to embed but will make a difference. So what's been the reaction from the salty old sea dogs then to this rule? Has there been any resistance? I think it's been mixed from what I've heard and I think there's some that have gone, you know, we have enough problems offshore in the middle of an ocean, we don't need women, so we'll go with seven. Um, but, you know, those guys are probably going to look a little arrogant when it comes to the racing and they're beaten by a mixed team. Ultimately, that's what we want to happen. There are some thinking, well, I'll get two quite small people so they can do the other little jobs and it won't really make much difference. And you're thinking, well, that's not really quite what we want to achieve. But then there's others that are thinking, right, I want the best, the strongest, the good drivers. I want to make those two extra paces or the equal team work and gain from it. So it's a real mixed bag. And I think those that have sailed mixed before know that it ups the girls game and evens out the balance of emotions for the guys. And it's a really nice atmosphere to sail in. Mm -hmm. Those that have never sailed in a mixed team before are probably a little bit threatened by it, scared of the unknown scared. and don't quite know how it's going to work, yeah. maybe. I think in, in 2000 uh, and 2002, we did Maiden 2, which was a 120-foot catamaran with six girls and six guys. And we thought this was the, the, you know, how things would become. So we had a male skipper and a female skipper. I was having my daughter, so I was the project manager. And um, we broke more world records than any other British multi-hull team. We smashed a lot of French world records, the 24-hour record. And it was a great atmosphere on the boat, men and women sailing together. And we were like, oh, this is it. <laughs> this, well, this is the future. Fantastic. Yeah. Here we go. And then we, you know, sort of went on to do other things and nothing happened. And, you know, the next Volvo was completely men. There was no women in it at all. And you just go, oh, guys, you know. Take us back even further, Tracy, because in, in um, 1989, you went in the route around the world race, didn't you? Um, were there more women back then than there are, than there are now? No, there were less. Um, so when I did the 85-86 race, there were 250 men and four women, and I was the only woman on, a, on an ocean racing maxi. They did not want me on the boat, let me tell you. They told me they were going to make me cry every day and maybe throw me over the side going around Cape Horn. So, um, but I managed to, to stay on the boat. That made me want to put an all-female crew together, which was made in, in 1989-90. For no other reason, really, just to see if we could do it, to prove um, one way or the other, because no one knew. So, I mean, Maiden was very successful. We won two legs. We came second overall. We annoyed a lot of people. We were very happy. Um, but I think, I think the real feeling, and I think Dee has felt this as well, is that on the race itself, the men who we were racing against had massive respect for us, treated us as equals, didn't think it was weird that there was an all-female crew in the race, didn't like being beaten by us, but there was no sort of like, oh, well, you know, anything because they're girls. You know, there was a feeling, a sense of real equality starting to happen. And since then, it's been two steps forward and one step back, hasn't it? It's, yeah, it's ugh. hard, but they, they are really supportive, as you yeah. say. And, you know, it's, it's very old-fashioned to have that you know, the fear, the scepticism oh, and the so cynicism awesome. and, oh, it's unlucky to go to sea with a girl on board. You know, <laughs> that's how far back some of people's thinking is. But when you're there and you're in it, the guys are really supportive. But we've still yet to see it actually come to fruition where they've gone, well, come sailing with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this incentivising rule change from Volvo Ocean Race will help make that happen. Mm -hmm. I think as well, sorry, just, and we were talking about this earlier, you know, I think... With Maiden 2, we were six girls that invited six boys to come sailing with us, and I think that was a really great way of doing it. You know, I think if we had someone as, um, like Dee as the skipper of a mixed team, uh, you know, where maybe you put the girls together first and then you invite the guys to, to come sailing with you, I think that might, might be a great way of doing it. Step up to the mark, so big hurry shoulders. So you get on with it, please. <laughs> See what I can Thank do. Thank you. Well, is there a disadvantage if the teams decide to stick with the seven men? Is there a disadvantage to them or is there more of a disadvantage if you have a larger crew member? No, it's, it will definitely be a disadvantage to have less crew on the boat. You've got less chance of rest. Everything is it's really physically demanding on a Volvo 65, those boats. And you need everybody involved to do something. And when you've got less people, that's less reserves to 
draw from. It's less handles on the manual grinding. Everything is working against you. So therefore, the crews that opt for a larger crew by mixing it up will have an advantage. Mm -hmm. The disadvantage that they may call on a weight with your gear and your kit and life jackets, survival suits and the bodies is negligible. The advantages will far outweigh any disadvantage. And I think it will make a team of seven guys when they get beaten by a mixed team and they get fatigued and they're running on empty and they're not performing, really wish that they'd taken a mixed team. And the nice thing now is the configuration doesn't have to stay the same for each leg, and that's the first time this has happened. And I think you'll see some of those teams maybe changing on some of the legs to change their crew configuration. Just finally for both of you, um, obviously there's the issue of quotas, but do you think that this, if this ruling is successful, then it might have a wider impact on other sports? I really hope so. You know, I think sailing isn't the only sport that we can, it's one of the few, but that we can compete together. But, you know, I mean, really looking now at the way uh, where women's sport is going, we were talking earlier about women's football, women's rugby, women's cricket, uh, beating, you know, the guys. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's a positive thing. And I think the great thing is that it, we are getting more buy-in from men. There is less resistance. There's the old rear guard going, we don't want women in anything. But most guys are open-minded and are starting to really move. And incredibly supportive and as supportive. well. supportive. And, there, you know, mixed hockey is a huge sport going on and the hockey girls in their own right and the guys are so successful. So I think there's potential and it's exciting. I think women's sport is a really exciting place mm. to be and the mm. positive, maybe in an Olympic year it's highlighted, but the positive impact that it's having and people understanding that it exists is only helping women's sport. Wonderful. Dee Kafari and Tracy Edwards, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us on this subject. Thank you. Right, England's cricketers won the final one day international in Kingston to beat the West Indies 3-2. They're now just one win away from qualifying for next year's World Cup in England. And we've managed to get a behind the scenes look at their life on tour. It's not going too well. I had a bit of a schoolboy error and I left my hold all with all my suitcases, which are nicely been shipped to Kingston. So I've got some borrowed headphones off the blue, the manager. It's a bit of an unwritten rule that you do not change seats. So the moment you step off the airport, you choose your seat, and for the entire tour, that is your seat. Danny Wyatt's a backseat bandit. Um, obviously, Soph's joined at this tour, but yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I've just got a new recruit, Bob Ted. No original. Whoa, that's not okay. <laughs> He's been on every tour I've been on, been to Sri Lanka twice. Okay, so I'm going to take you around our floor so you can have a little bit of a look behind the scenes and what the England women get up to when they're in their hotel rooms. Hello! Hello. Do you want so... to speak to my mum? Oh, there we go, she's on the phone. Oh, my heart is in bed, of course she is. <laughs> so a really exciting start to our tour. Mum, say hello, you're on the telly. <laughs> Hi. <Where? laughs> Mrs Beaumont. Oh, that's not what <laughs> I'm going to go into Ali's room in a minute, he's playing guitar. Would you like to join us oh, on our tour? Okay. Really good win today. Obviously, Gail showed massive character to to come out and go out and, and play like that. The bowlers are brilliant as they've been on tour, and um, yeah, really, really tough. It's a really good win in, in sort of foreign conditions against a good side. So, really good win for us as a team, and um, yeah, really proud of the girls. They're brilliant. Strong words next from Scotland manager Anna Sunyol on her team's 7 0 defeat to the Netherlands. Plus, we preview England's match against Spain this evening. And LPGA golf action's on the way. Did that shot cost world number two Aria Jutanagarn the Blue Bay title in China?